Hi, my name is Dr. Peter Kay, and this is the next lecture in the first year fluid dynamics module. And this lecture is all about incompressible fluid flow. So what I'm going to talk about in this lecture is I'm going to talk about um, energy in the fluid um, and conservation of that um, energy. And when we consider the different energies in the fluid and the conservation of that, that will allow us to build up what's known as the Bernoulli's equation. Okay, and this is quite important in um, fluid dynamics. I will then, um, once I've shown you how to uh, how to um, derive the Bernoulli's equation, um, we'll then talk about how we can simplify Bernoulli's equation um, for um, most engineering applications. Okay, so first of all, if we consider um, the energy that's in a fluid, um, then there's kind of four um, main sources of that really, so four different different types of energy. So um, there's kinetic energy, okay, and hopefully you remember from your, um, uh, that the kinetic energy is equal to half mass times velocity squared, okay, half mvc squared. Um, we also have the gravitational potential energy, okay, so that's the mass, um, in this case of your fluid, um, times the gravitational pull times the height, okay. We also have flow work, and um, if you're not sure, um, which is equal to p pressure times volume, and if you're not sure where this comes from, I'll derive this on the next slide. And we also have internal energy, okay, um, which is given the symbol U. So look in your thermodynamics textbooks if you're not sure um, what internal energy is. I won't go into it here, but you need to um, have a look at it there. But essentially it's to do with um, link to the heat um, that's supplied to the fluid. But because we, um, in most um, engineering applications, the temperature change is usually cons considered to be very small, um, we're, for the purposes of this, going to ignore um, the internal energy changes. Okay. So, in terms of flow work, if we consider this um, pipe work here, and it has a constant cross-sectional area A, okay, and the fluid is flowing through the pipe at velocity c. And if we just consider this kind of slug um, of fluid in the middle that's bound by this plane um, x, okay, and a, a length l um, away, we have another plane y. So we're just considering this slug in the middle. Now to push this um, fluid um, through the pipe, um, we need to essentially um, apply a pressure to it or apply a force to it. And the force that's applied, um, you know, um, plane xx, the, the force is the pressure times the area, okay, so P times A. And the work that, therefore, that is done to this fluid, the work is, um, if you remember, the force times distance, okay. So in this instance, uh, our distance is L, okay, so we've got this pressure um, acting on this area, giving us a force over this distance. So we end up with pressure times area times length. Okay, but um, as we know from simple geometry, the the volume of this um, fluid is equal to the area times length. Therefore, the flow work or the, from this equation is equal to pressure times the volume. Okay, so that's where the PV term comes from. Now, if we um, consider all the types of energy um, in a fluid, if we just look at this um, pipe below, so it's, um, we've got a few things going on here. It's coming in at one, um, so this is our datum here, one, and we've got at the inlet of our, our pipe, and we've got a datum two at the exit of our pipe. Now the fluid is flowing into the pipe with velocity C1, and it's ex exiting the pipe with velocity C2. The inlet of the pipe is um, uh, height Z1 from the ground, and the exit is height z2 from the ground. So you can see we've got a difference in potential energy terms between the inlet and the outlet as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and um, see um, uh, basically work out the um, the energy terms that are associated in this process. But we know from conservation of energy that the energy of the inlet must be um, also equal to the energy of the outlet. We can't create or destroy energy. So when we look at these terms together, 
um, remember that we're ignoring um, the internal energy, then the energy at one and the energy two is is equal to in words um, the kinetic energy plus the potential energy plus the flow work um, or that's being done. Okay, and um, remember that we derived um, uh, mathematical uh, relationships for each of these. So kinetic energy is a half um, m v uh, uh, c squared. Okay, for the, uh, obviously this is a uh, inlet condition plus um, m g z plus p v for um, you know the inlet and our outlet, and these have got to be equal. So if we combine them all together, if we know that the um, our flow work plus our kinetic energy term plus our potential term at the inlet has got the sum of that has to be equal to the sum of this at the exit. So what we're basically saying is that this is equal to a constant. So at any point in this pipe, um, if we knew um, we could work out, so, so at any point in this pipe, this is a constant. Okay, so obviously the um, the velocity team will change as you're going through this expanding section and the height is also changing but the, the sum of those um, things will always be a constant okay so the, we're now getting this into the form but this isn't quite um, Bernoulli's so um, Bernoulli's also makes the assumption that the flow that we're looking at is incompressible okay so if, incompress if it's incompressible then V is a constant i.e. V1 is equal to V2 um, which we can just put as V so we can substitute v for the v's in here and what i'm also going to do um, also done here so substituting v1 and v2 for v um we've also divided through by v so you can see that's disappeared from here now i've got one over v here um, and this term's over v um the reason for that is um we can now substitute in um for density okay so density is equal to mass divided by volume. So this is now getting towards um, Bernoulli's saying. So this is um, how it's, you'll see it written in the textbook. So the pressure um, plus a half uh, times rho times velocity squared plus rho gz is equal to a constant. Okay. And this is what Bernoulli's um, term is. Okay. And if we kind of break this down and kind of um, you know, analyze this a little bit more as well. We can see that in in our um, so this is all written in terms of pressure now. So the P term that's our static pressure term. Okay. Um, then we add the um, another term, this um, half rho c squared, and this is termed the dynamic pressure term. Okay. So it's the the pressure that's associated with the flow effectively. Now, if we add these two together, we get what's called the stagnation pressure. And the stagnation pressure um, kind of be, can be explained in words as it's the pressure. So if you have a fluid that's flowing, it'll be the, um, the stagnation pressure. It's the pressure that it would be if, it, if the fluid came to rest. Um, so you can see here that, that the sum of those two is a static pressure. So is the... Um, velocity decreases the static pressure will increase till eventually that goes to zero so your static pressure will be equal to your stagnation pressure. The last term um, you now recognize perhaps is um, rho gz which is our hydrostatic um, pressure term yeah and if we add that onto the stagnation pressure we get the total pressure okay so what we're saying is at any point in the fluid um, there's the sum of the static pressure the dynamic pressure and the hydrostatic pressure is equal to the total pressure, which is a constant. <clears throat> so that's what I just kind of explained on the same side that we have these three terms and that equals the total pressure. But we've kind of written it here in pressure, but you also see um, in some examples and textbooks that um, rather than being expressed in terms of pressure, it's expressed in terms of head. So obviously this is all in um you know newtons per meter squared but if we divide through by rho g to every term um, then you can see we've ended up here so now it's exactly the same thing but we've just expressed it in heads so you know the units of these are meters each of these terms is meters so um, you might see it 
either in terms of pressure or in terms of head, but it's the same thing. All we've done is divided by or times by rho g. Okay, so just to finish off, um, this um, uh, um, Bernoulli's equation said it's a constant, but there are some assumptions that are attached to it. Um, if you remember at the start we said we're ignoring internal energy, so Bernoulli's assumption assumes that no heat transfer has taken um, place um, in the flow of the fluid, in other words it's adiabatic. Um, also assume that no work is done, um, so it doesn't pass through a pump or turbine. So if you're looking at a system and it goes through a pump or turbine, then these equations don't hold, you can't use them anymore. The flow is um, frictionless, um, again linked to kind of no temperature change. The flow is incompressible um, as you go throughout the system. And um, also just one thing to note as well, so um, by saying it's incompressible, you might think that it only applies to liquids and not to gases. But it does apply also apply to gases, but just at low speed. Um, and that's because for most um, engineering applications, gases at low speed um, can be assumed to be incompressible.